discuss in the future. Let's take these one at a time. It's, it's, it's a drum roll. To, yeah, we'd love to hear. Like, what are people excited about? What? Don't, now, don't all jump in at once. <laughs> I'll go. Uh, I felt like a lot of the stuff that I've learned from not only Channel Islands, but the other college I went to, mm -hmm. it like kind of came together and I can actually like talk about it. And it made me feel like I actually learned stuff in college that I could apply to stuff. Good. That was cool. Awesome. It's sometimes hard to see the path until you've walked down the path and you turn around and look back and you're like, oh yeah. I hey, see that's from right the there. Matrix, that line. It's true. Anyone, other people. Anyone? Other people. Uh, I'll go. Um, I guess after like all like the field work we did and analysis, I was just happy to like get results. Even though my hypothesis was wrong, just like getting to the results section, I was just like happy to get there. <laughs> and it, and you, you have to consider that it's not that your hypothesis was wrong. You just, what you did was you proved that your hypothesis um, was was not correct and that is still very much a significant result totally totally i mean one of the challenges with COVID is people are saying like oh we gotta do this and then this will happen and it doesn't happen like oh crap we had it wrong we're self-correcting right we when, when we when we go down a path and we're like oops that was the wrong way let's fix it let's right so that's that's all good that, that that's part of the humility of what we do so great I'll go. Um, so because I had two things that I had to present for, um, I am very proud of the fact that I was able to answer almost every question that present that was presented to me. Um, Dan only had one question that I couldn't answer, and that was because that wasn't part of my research. It was part of my partner's research. So I couldn't answer that question. And I Oh, and she wasn't standing there. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, I can't, I can't answer about that because that wasn't my focus so but I was able to answer with a uh, really strong certainty um, on a lot of different things from both New Orleans and from and social trailing so like yeah. having that was was awesome great I do you think, Suzanne can, can I ask you about, like do you think it was because like what what made you feel like so comfortable and confident that you could like answer those questions um, I think it literally, it was a year's worth of research for one thing for capstone, obviously. And then, um, for the New Orleans stuff, it was because I have, um, I chose a topic that I actually just know a lot of information on. Um, cause it's really just like the buildings within New Orleans, my mom's an architect. So I grew up learning about historical buildings and going to different museums and seeing these types of things. And it was a passion for me growing up. So I, I just knew about that stuff already so i'm i'm curious did did it did that sort of level of comfort with your project having that like the way suzanne described it having like committed so much to it in the last year did that like does it, like resonate with other people were you kind of like oh wow like i actually do know what i'm talking about let's see some thumbs up um i'm curious as a follow-up question did anyone did anyone realize that you, you, you feel like when people come and talk to you about your poster, um, I always feel like I'm being like quizzed by someone who knows more than me, but it's actually like not the case, right? Like you are the expert oh. on your project. They're asking questions because you know more than they do. And like, I, like realizing that for me was like kind of a fun mental flip. Um, once upon a time totally and you guys are all there i mean you guys are all there and that and that's that uh that going from a, a student to becoming a peer right to becoming someone that that's at the table and we're all having conversations and you're giving it and you're you're suggesting stuff and and that's really cool and you guys are are all there and uh and even if you think that well, my statistics aren't right or my thing is kind <laughs> of right nobody's thought about your topic your specific topic and your specific area and your specific location at this time more than you guys have, than you all have collectively in your, in your groups. And that's cool. That's super cool. What else? Can I chime in? Mm -hmm. Please. 
So going off what you were saying, Doc, um, there was a guy who was judging me and he came up and I could tell that he was genuinely interested in my topic. And when I was explaining things, he would be like, oh, whoa, really? No way. And he really wanted to know information and he was asking me a ton of questions, but it was because he wanted to know more about the topic. Yeah, yeah. how immensely satisfying that must have felt, right? Yeah, it felt really good. Kind of along with that, I felt that I wasn't expecting to have as much discussion. Um, even some pieces where it wasn't related directly to my research, just other um, things in the field, like what I thought about them, how they might relate. Um, where I was beforehand more expecting just to be quizzed and like questions thrown at me to try to get me to slip up and so that I didn't actually know what I was doing. Gotcha. So like, you thought you'd give them gotcha yeah. questions? There, yeah. there's, there should, I don't know anybody that does that. I mean, uh, I mean, that, that's not the point of, that's not even, that's not the point of a real academic conference meeting either. Yeah. It, I mean, everyone, like every, very, very rarely, like half of a 10th of a percent, sometimes there's some a-holes that sort of behave that way. But even in academic conferences, people want to know, they want to learn, right? And so some people are a little more abrasive when they ask questions, but nobody, no one's trying to say you're an idiot or like, why'd you do that, dumbass? I mean, it's more like, really? I thought X, my experience is this, but you found that. And it's, it really is more of a dialogue um, in the vast, 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 vast majority of cases, cases. And again, this is different. We choose this format rather than have you guys give a talk because the talk is really you, you're standing up front and you're, and you're like lecturing to us, right? There's a little bit of time for questions at the end, but really it's you lecturing. This format is you're standing there and it's an invitation to, to chat. And so, um, yeah, so I'm glad you guys had a lot of chats. What else? Someone we haven't heard from yet, which is most of you. I can go. Sorry, I'm a little sick, so my voice sounds horrible, but um, I guess one thing I was proud of was not being as nervous as I thought I was, if that makes sense. Like, going into it, I was super, super scared of, like, talking to anybody, and even before I was supposed to present, there was two um, older ladies talking about my poster, and I, it just felt so natural, and I guess that was something that I was, like, shocked about because... It kind of felt nice to like actually have a conversation rather than someone just like, you know, and you're knowing someone's taking notes on what you're talking about. It was just a conversation right. about barn owls, which was probably a great feeling for me. So Rihanna, were you were you, were you nervous because you thought I didn't know the material, or were you more nervous because we've just spent so much time last couple of years on Zoom and it felt a little bit awkward to be in front of people, or maybe both, or what? What did you? What was yeah, I think it's more of the talking because of the zoom i i'm just really shy in general so mm -hmm. like in talking in front of people i turn red i'm like sure. so nervous just being in front of a crowd or having the attention on me totally. but in that case it was it wasn't like that it was just like oh i'm just talking about what i learned and there are questions and a lot of the questions they had were just like they general information that i was able to answer for them so yeah it was just it was nice totally totally Anybody else? Nobody else? I'll go. So yeah, uh, I was proud of just like learning like all the, the information and, and data and then just being able to communicate it in a way where like people who had no idea what any, like what the project was about at all could understand it from beginning to end. And that was just, it was just a nice feeling of just like accomplishment and just been like, you know, cause I feel like that's a huge part about when you're like learning is just being able to like teach somebody else totally. what it means. And so being able to do that uh, was a really good feeling. Yeah. Awesome. Totally agree. Any other volunteers? You want to go into question number two, Dan? Yeah. So you had this experience. What did you learn? What did you discover um, about yourself, your your topic, 
the format, the endeavor of endeavor of science with a capital S. Ah. What did you learn? S. I can go. Yeah, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I learned that people aren't mean and that they aren't out to get you. They're just genuinely curious and just want to know about your topic and read me a question. Well, hmm. Yeah, okay. I was nervous for no reason. Good. I mean, oh, I mean, I'm not good that you're nervous, but I mean, but, but good that you realize that you're nervous for no reason. I can go. Yeah, please, Dorian. Wait, Dorian, I'd, wait, I'd love to hear from you, but I want to go back to Ali. Do, Ali, do you think, do you think you'd be nervous doing it again? Like your next so. academic conference, how do you think you'll feel? I think I'll feel better because um, people are just curious about your project. Nobody's there to bash you. They're there to bash you. I think that's that's for something else. It's their own problem, but people are just genuinely curious about what's going on. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 conferences all the time, you know. And now now we're now kind of you all are kind of getting into your career paths, or maybe you're interested in GIS, or you're interested in field stuff, or or water, or whatever your your thing is. So there's there's specialty conferences, right? You guys can present your work at those places. Um, I mean, I mean, if it's, if it's Dr. Reinemann's data, whatever, be yeah, check with them. But, 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 you know, for the most part, you guys could present these results um, in, you know, you know, update your poster, what have you. One example is the Western Society of Naturalists meeting, which is in, in November, it's going to be in Oxnard this year. And so that's a no, very really? cheap, yeah. Claire and I are the uh, local chairs. So, oh, that's so, fun. so uh, an example of a meeting that's really aimed at students um, and relatively cheap um, to register for, and it's going to be in, in you know a hotel in Oxnard, so it's not very far away. You don't have to you don't have to pay for airfare or whatever. I totally went to this conference when I was an undergraduate. I tried to sneak in, but they made me register. <laughs> so so if you go to a big fancy conference, sometimes it can be many hundreds of dollars to register. This is like forty nine bucks. Or whatever it is, I, I should know off the top of my head. But the point and is, if you're still going to be a student next year, yeah, we'll discount. be able to cover your funding through Coast funds that you'll have to apply for. But you could absolutely get funds for that. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, totally. And that's a and that's another great networking opportunity, right? So so uh, to go to these meet professional meetings, academic or just you know industry or what have you, and it's a great place to sort of meet people and find out where the jobs are and a, just a great, great networking opportunity. Awesome. So with that plug, Dorian. Thank you for your patience. Um, I learned that as long as you put the time and effort into something that is going to be presented, that you'll do great because you know your, pro, um, your idea backwards and forwards because you put the effort into it. Totally. Exactly. You guys know the most about, you, you've thought the most about, about this than anybody else, relative to anybody else. What else? Um, I learned that I need to get better at public speaking. <laughs> we all need to get, we can all, <laughs> all get better. But, you know, so, but, but, but Evan, how did you, so, but overall, you're able to talk to people, right? You're able to explain yourself. Yeah, I wish maybe I could say it a slightly different way, but were you not pleased with how you could explain stuff? Um, my articulation could have been a bit more fluid. I was cool. I was nervous. So I was jumping around more than I'd like to sure. have. Again, that, that's, that's why having at least like that sort of elevator pitch, that really quick, tight kind of, this is who I am, this is what I did, this is what I found really helped yeah i had that i had that and i practiced it, it a help? lot but it, it when the time came it was just like couldn't remember any of it so yeah so so then i just keep practicing i keep practicing keep practicing and it's one of those things where muscle memory it'll eventually kick in but um but you did it right i mean i mean you might have been nervous might have been jumping around but you did it so that's cool yeah i definitely got the information conveyed it just could have been more concise sure sure one thing i i suggested to folks was sort of like about the like in editing sort of reviewing and editing posters was like the relationship between sort of texts and bullets 
and how sort of each of your kind of text boxes you might lead with like more of like a one sentence nice kind of topic sentence of that box followed by kind of bulleted evidence or data or information um, and when you're talking about your poster talking to people it helps to sort of like when you know exactly where certain things are and how to flow through them you can say well we started working in this environment right here and we sort of went through a method that generally looked like this and if you refer to figure one, what we found was that, but this is complicated by what we show, see here in figure two. And there are the main takeaways, and you can sort of walk through what's up there, right? Um, it's, you, you're not, you're, you're speaking from the cuff, but you've got really good prompts right. for yourself right there in the form of your poster. Um, and so you don't you don't have to feel like you're totally winging it and like relying entirely on memory. Right? You've got these, you've got all the content right there to look at. This is a question of strategically referring to it to help yourself and then to to bring your listeners slash viewer along with you. Yep, totally. Somebody else. else? Yeah, I can go. Please, please. Um, it's not quite capstone related, but I learned how much I want to go to New Orleans on a service learning trip. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Ding. Victory. Victory. Yeah. Kind of like we all learned that we would like to swim with humpback whales. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great. <laughs> what else? Someone else. Did anyone learn anything about their data based on like an insightful Ooh, question, question or... Question. Um, or sort of viewing it in a new, standing in front of it and staring at it for an hour, you know, waiting for people to come talk to you? Uh, so for me, uh, yeah. Professor Spies, uh, so I was doing um, uh, employee awareness and sustainable seafood in the counties of Ventura, Santa Barbara, and LA. And I had like these percentages of LA being the highest and then Professor Spies was like, Jorge, like, even though, you know, LA is might be the highest, that's still a pretty low score. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of embarrassing because we live on the coast and stuff like that. And like having such a low percentage, it's kind of embarrassing on, on sustainability of seafood. And I was like, right. oh, yeah, I never thought of yeah that breath of fresh air right that sort of outside perspective is like you know I've, I've been thinking of it like from looking looking up and this person's taking it at the perspective of looking down on it You're like oh my gosh that's another same thing but just a different way to contextualize it so that's cool yeah i mean because you're all like you get in the thick of it you're like staring at all these numbers for hours and hours and hours and hours and then someone comes along with a, a fresh perspective yeah and it can be really valuable Let's hear from one more person. Something about data or about the endeavor of science. I can go. Please. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's super data related, but it was just really interesting that a lot of people's dads were taking pictures of me and Adrian's beer data. And they were just looking at the photos <laughs> with all of that science behind it. And it was really, really fun to talk to them and like teach them, I guess, some of that. And they were, they were really excited to show a lot of their friends some of that data, which was really cool. You say the beer, the beer research skewed males, what you're saying. Yeah, it was really funny. There was like a dad, I think, with like a uh, a baby in like a backpack, and he like took a picture of our posters and was like, "Wow, got to show that to the dudes later." That's cool. That's cool. That's that that suggests a separate um, a separate research project altogether. Totally. Um, I also learned. Oh yeah, go ahead, Ali. Um, sorry, one more thing. I also learned how. Um, after my research data and all that thing, um, it led to more questions that could be made from those studies. I was like, hmm, it's yeah. a whole different topic by itself. I, was like, I don't have to worry about that. So one, one study led to another study, leads to another study. It's like somebody else could figure out on that in the next capsule, not me. Yeah, totally. And that's one we haven't talked that much about. We talked about what might the management implications be or, you know, which is one kind of 
way to finish framing the thing, but, but on all of our scientific studies, we never figure everything out, right? You, you all have built on the work of other people. Dr. Ryman has built on the work of other people. I built on the work of other people. And then the next generation will build off us and so on and so forth. So, so it's, it's absolutely, if you guys haven't given much thought to that, that's a real important thing to think about. What are the next steps? Either, either the, 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 the natural, obviously we should next do it with X or we next do it with Y, but also we could do that or something that might not be super totally obvious. It might be interesting to try this in this context or try it with this variable or try it with this time of year or something like that. So that's super important to, 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 to do that. And, and as you guys get older and become more comfortable with this kind of stuff, it's a really great exercise for you to do before you do your poster X, you know, think about what, what, what are people going to ask? What if you had tried X and that sort of mental exercise is a really helpful thing to get you prepared for sometimes when people ask you questions, because you could always say, I don't know, that's a great idea, which is fine. But you could also say, I don't know, but I, I did think about that. And I thought if I were to do that, maybe we could use taller trees or whatever. Great. Great. Um, I see your hand, Suzanne, and I'll just jump on that on this comment to add that, like, why science is kind of like an interesting endeavor for as like as a way of helping us understand the world, is because it is this continuous, unfinished, self-correcting process, um, and so like that's why it works is because questions lead to questions lead to questions. And maybe we answer it wrong the first time, but eventually we answer it correctly. Um, and I can recommend some really great reading on the philosophy of science if this is of interest to any of you. Um, Suzanne, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick comment on that as well. Um, Dr. Fairfax came by and she was like, I'm not judging you, but I'm going to talk to you about this. And I was like, all right, cool. So I gave her my spiel and everything and uh, answered some questions she had. And she was like, all right, so in doing this, if money wasn't an issue, if time wasn't an issue, what's something else that you would have liked to add to this type of research um, to just continue it on? Um, and I was like, that's actually a really good question. So like that made me start thinking. And I was like, if money and time were not an issue, I was like talking to people and like, cause with social trailing, I'm like asking them questions, like doing actually the personal type of stuff. I'm like, that would be a great idea. And so I'm actually going to add that into my thesis now because she cool. asked me that question. Good. So, yeah. Good. I was asked that same question during my dissertation defense. So it's, it's a good question. Yeah, I think, I think oftentimes we have limited money and time, but it's still important to go through the mental exercise of what would be the ideal thing. And then we can talk about maybe what we're constrained to do, but, but don't, don't, artificially constrain yourself out of the box as the first, as the first, uh, you know, step. Cool. Anyone's interested in some light summer reading? <laughs> um, philosophy of science is fascinating. Um, all right. You, you never get it right the first time or the second time or ever, right? That's what we're talking about. It's a whole, it's a, Growth mindset, right? What are you gonna? How are you gonna continue growing and improving and mastering? Um, but assuming some of you have the privilege of participating in future academic conferences, like what would you do differently? Like, and we've got a hand up already, Angelica. Take it away. I don't know if that was too soon. I'm sorry. No, go, go, go. 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 Oh, I was just gonna say, I wish I could have kind of not rehearsed what I was gonna say, but kind of prepared myself a little more because I realized that everyone that was evaluating me, I wanted to mention like certain measurements and it was kind of hard to explain when I didn't have like a figure. So I would have definitely done that and put more thought into that. I, as in like made a figure to address those yeah. particular. Yeah. It, it probably should probably go in your thesis then, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, and that's a great, Ajaga, that sort of goes a little bit right to what we were talking about before that um, you knew those were important things, but you didn't, it wasn't until you had someone else's perspective that like you realized, oh, like it'd be really great to have that. I've got that in my brain, but it'd be helpful for other people to have that visualization. 
um, and that that's 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 a really important thing to ask yourself, sort of in the process of communicating your science. Like, does your audience have everything they need to understand what I understand about these data? Yeah. What else? Or did the rest of you just nail it? Perfect. Uh, going off what Angelica said, um, I would probably change some of the wording and maybe add a bit more details just so things are better explained, especially if I wasn't next to my poster. To help it stand on its own. Mm -hmm. Smart. Yeah, we did talk a little bit about this when we were discussing posters that, that there, there is sort of another flavor where like if we were just going to leave the poster out in the hallway for a long time for not to orally present, but just to sort of be there, that would be a case where we maybe want to have a little more text in there to make sure we explain it since you're not there to be the interpreter. But yeah, but, but good, good. I'm on the opposite end too with Alexa's. Um, I feel like I try to make mine where I put like a lot of, not a lot of words on, but like I had words on there to kind of like walk you through it if you're just looking at it on your own. But I feel like I definitely could have like cut back a little bit and found like a better medium between the two. Cool. Is there a way, can I ask you guys, is there a way you think if we, because uh, everybody see last year, this year, you guys all seem to really like um, the gather as the first sort of toe in the water type of experience. Um, I'm curious if you have any suggestions now that you've had a face-to-face a, a -face poster session, if there's anything we could maybe adjust or, 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 or modify on the gather to make it even, even more of a, everybody, everybody enjoyed it as like a first toe in the water, but is there another way we can make it more of a even better prep for the physical uh, your first or physical. make the actual physical in-person symposium more like the legend of zelda <laughs> either or either or. you but pick. mostly what doctor i asked i was <laughs> stuck in the void for like 10 minutes you were stuck in the what the <laughs> void for 10 minutes oh, oh, oh like, like between yeah. the electronic yeah. rooms yeah so yeah, that, was, that was a little bit of a hassle sorry, sorry hopefully sorry. that doesn't that did not happen to anyone in the real yeah. world yeah, hopefully you weren't like <laughs> going in and out of the door to the grand salon for 10 minutes <laughs> maybe also like uh maybe more seating areas because like by the end uh my back was like dead <laughs> it was hurting pretty bad oh you're oh, in, the real one. in the grand yeah. salon more chairs yeah. in the yeah. grand salon yeah this gets cool. a long time to be on your feet that's true okay cool yeah on the the online version of the poster session some of our audios weren't connecting to others so i got like some reviews saying that I was gone for over 20 minutes when I was standing in front of my poster. I think our audio just wasn't connecting and same thing with mm. the cameras. Mm. So like I got some wonky feedback just cause they thought I wasn't there, but our, our audios and videos weren't connected to each other for some reason. Did you have, did you have awesome internet connectivity and stuff, Megan? Yes, I did. Mm. Okay, cool. And you're on Wi-Fi, not a cell phone connection? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I have a suggestion. Sure. I think lowering the amount of people we were supposed to review would be good because uh, I think it was five or four we were given. And I just found it to be too many, especially when I was trying to write like detailed notes. And uh, most of the responses I got were like one or two words, not really like very helpful feedback. Um, and I just chalked that up to not having enough time. Cool. Would have been nice uh, if possible and gather to have a couple of people mixed in that are just going around um, like to discuss because I feel like in the same way we were really focused on doing the uh, like reviews and we we're asking questions and less focused on just having a like casual discussion. So I wasn't you, a lot of Brenda, you're cutting out there. You're saying you just would like some more oh. just random folks just kind of just chatting away in there. Yeah, just maybe even just coming in so you can have more of that discussion that happened in the real life um, cool. poster session. Cool.
Yeah, I mean, like in the uh, in the online one, um, I literally didn't get any comments on mine. I just had a couple of people that said like, yeah, it's not ready. And that was it. Like, it was just the like, nope, it's not ready for for the symposium. I'm like, well, obviously, but like, what are your suggestions to help make me ready? And I got zero things. So, yeah. Cool. What about, um, since time's getting on here, unless somebody else wants to add to that, but maybe we can go on to a third question about what's one thing you guys would change if you, if, if we were doing the poster symposium this week, let's say, um, and, you, and you had a chance to like modify, update your, your poster, what's, what's one thing that you think you would update? Dimensions. The dimensions? Yes, because I'm, it's harder to visualize 42 inches on a screen than in real person. Then I'm like, hmm, how big should I make my graph and all of this? The graph came out the way I wanted, but they seemed like way, way bigger than I'm in person than they were on the slides. So just working with that a little bit, I think. Gotcha. To like visualize it on the screen and in person too. Right, the layout. Yeah, that'd be a good. Um, so you know one of the one of the one of the few in person activities was we actually brought you all into the the tech lab um, to to look at like the real posters you could see forty eight inches but it'd be cool to have the, some of the actual files up like oh look here it is on the screen and now here's that same poster on the wall because it really is you know like important to realize that like oh you know that 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 graph's gonna be a foot wide you know. To helping helping visualize that. Uh, can I piggyback on that comment you just made, Doc? Please. Uh, so I actually took after we did the poster session where you guys showed us all the previous posters. I had brought a ruler to school, and then I basically was like looking at other people's posters to actually measure it by hand because I noticed that too, like looking at a screen, it looks so small, but I'm like, okay, the dimensions are like adding up. So then I literally, I'm like looking at other people's graphs and measure it up. I'm like, okay. And I think that helped me visualize it and help me create my graph or my poster better. Cool. Great idea. Super smart idea. Um, piggybacking on that a little bit more it'd be cool if some of the posters had like sticky notes on them like indicating what size font stuff was or like indicating what dimensions it was on powerpoint or uh yeah powerpoint so then we would know exactly what it looks like in person um that is the goal of the templates we provided mm -hmm. they do um, have all the sizes and fonts and goodies right there in them right but it's still on like the computer screen so it was harder for me to like. Yeah, know but exactly to actually, how it's gonna to look actually do that, we have to actually like print up a template where it says this is twelve point, this is twenty four point. That'd be a cool sort of demonstration thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. What about anybody else? Think about uh, if if they were going this week, what they would modify specifically to their their last week's version of their poster or change. Um, I would have made my font smaller. Um, once it like I saw it in person, it was a little bit bigger and would have liked I could have included like a bit more. Um, but yeah, just made it a tiny bit smaller. Cool. Did anyone find a typo you wish you'd fixed? That's why you print with black ink so that you can bring your Sharpie. <laughs> White background with black ink, then you can fix it. No problemo. I, must have, I told you guys, did I tell you guys a story about the guy that did his poster on butcher paper? I'll tell you guys that story in this class. Like drew it? Yeah. So this was, this was at a Ecological Society of America meeting, which is a meeting that's got like five, 6,000 people, huge meeting. And, uh, and this is probably like 15 years ago, whatever. And so everybody brought, had their posters and people were putting out their posters. And this guy walks in, flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop. And, uh, he goes up to his thing and he pulls out literally a roll of butcher paper, like sort of like off, off white uh, kind of paper. And he, he kind of pulls it out and then he kind of and rips it. Everybody's like, what the hell is this guy doing? And he, he thumbtacks up this thing and it's just blank, blank paper. And he pulls out a Sharpie, like a big, like a honking Sharpie, like one that's, you know, like, 
like an inch wide tip kind of thing. And he starts to, he writes a title on top. He writes his name in the university and he just starts drawing equations. And where everyone's like, what the hell is this? this is like the lamest thing. Like, what are you talking about? Is this? And the guy's like, you know, rah, 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 and he's writing stuff. And everybody's like, <laughs> like laughing. Oh, this guy's going to like, what a loser, right? Most popular poster in the conference. And like everybody and their brothers like standing around it and answering them, asking them questions. And we're like, we have, but we have these really well-designed posters. And like, nobody, and people are like, oh, yeah, this guy, this guy hand drew his poster. So you can do all the great work. And sometimes, it's in the uh, in in the uh, the format of the presentation. Sometimes, anything else you guys might change. I don't recommend that approach, generally speaking, for most people. I don't recommend that approach. Period. <laughs> Anybody want to take us home on one last? Uh, Good comment or insightful comment or fun comment. Otherwise, it'll have to be you, Dr. Ray. No, I don't. I'm not that insightful. How about somebody hasn't chimed in yet? One, 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 one reflection on on last week's experience. Tie, tie it all together. Put a bow on it. I would say you guys did great. I would say you guys did great for for folks who have been primarily virtualized for the last umpteen gazillion months. Um, I thought you guys did great. Um, Everybody was professional. Everybody was there. Everybody was on it. Even when you guys were nervous, you were still there. Even when you felt a little awkward, you were still there and present and, and chatting to people and talking to people. And, um, uh, you know, I said it in the email that I sent on this weekend, and that was not, that was not baloney. That was not um, said to, you know, make you feel better. Well, I hope it did make you feel better, but it, it wasn't, it was all true. You were blowing right? smoke. I wasn't blowing smoke. It was, it was, the provost was like, this is just awesome love this so again this is our brand new provost who's never seen this this uh type of event at our school <clears throat> and as well as other folks that had seen us do this in the past but hadn't seen it for years and your professionalism the 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 quality you guys brought to the work the seriousness you guys brought to the work and the and the intellectual just fun and honesty you guys brought to the work people loved it so pe people that random people that walked in People that were judges, people that were academic experts, they maybe weren't judging, but they, they've been to these things. Everybody was very impressed and, and you guys did, did fantastically well. So I think, uh, I think you guys should all be happy with your performance. Um, can we always do better? Yeah, we can always do better, but you guys did great. And there was no way to simulate this, right? This was our first thing coming out of the shoot, right? really, right? And so there's just got to do it the first, it's like pulling out in the traffic the first time, right? When you're like, learn to drive. At some point, you just got to pull out in the traffic and it's scary. And it's like, oh my God, am I going to kill someone? Well, I guess I got to do it at some point. So um, no, none of you killed anybody and you all made us very proud and you guys should all be very um, uh, confident that going in these next two weeks, you, you can knock the rest of the stuff out as well. What? what? what, what? And now we're going to shift gears. Um, 